All right, guys, today we're underneath the truck. We're underneath this uh, Suburban because we're going to be fixing this problem with a broken shift cable. And in this case, what's given out on the shift cable is the bushing that goes in here that normally hooks up to the shift lever. It's, uh, it's just worn out, so it won't stay on. This thing is popping off, and so what happens is when you move your shifter and from park, reverse, drive, right ever, that's what's supposed to grab this little lever and uh, tell the transmission what gear you want. And if this thing pops off on you, nothing's going to happen. So, you know, normally on a repair like this, I would try to just replace the bushing, but on this particular type of cable, and there's no mainstream manufacturer of that. You know, there's one kind of off-brand that I found, but they want 30 bucks for that, and I can replace the whole cable for 55 So, you know, kind of like the rule, if it costs more than half to replace it, or repair it rather, just go ahead and replace it. So that's what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to show you how to get this guy off. So, you know, other than, you know, disconnecting it here, it can also break at the end on the inside where the shift lever is. I'll show you that when we get up there. Uh, whichever end you start at, we're going to start at the bottom. You're going to disconnect it. There's a connection, there's, a, there's a, a little clip here that may be rusted out. You're going to get yourself like a flathead screwdriver or something. Let me see if I can put this light in place. I'm going to get under here. Hopefully you guys can see. You definitely want some uh, eye protection because when you work this guy out, I'm sure there's going to be a whole bunch of debris, dust, and rust particles that come off. Yep, I was just trying to avoid that. Now, if this guy's rusted out, you know, in the sense that it's physically got damage to it, not this cosmetic surface corrosion, but if it's actually damaged or if one of these legs has come off or you see pieces missing, you need to replace it. And I'll, sh I'll give you the part number for this down in the video description below. The other thing, too, you want to look at is on this shift lever, you want to make sure that this, this uh, stud that's welded on here has got a very clear ridge that's part of what it grabs on the bushing. You want to make sure that's not been rusted away and that this rounded edge is still there. Sometimes what you see on these is they rust off and they chip and they break. And if that's the case, you need to replace this lever because all you're going to do is chew up the new bushing. And I'll, I'll put the part number for this lever on as well. This is just held on by this, this um, fastener that you see up here, this nut. All right, so now with this U-clip uh, out of here, I should be able to just pull this guy out in order to get this guy to go. He's really stiff because he's been down here for a couple of decades. I'm going to have to go uh, get a bigger pair of pliers and come back on that. But let me show you. Once we come back and do that and get this off, this cable here then snakes around and goes up into this grommet that you see here. So this, this cable and this rubber grommet going into the body are all one piece and they're held in by these embedded clips. And we're gonna push this all the way through and bring this whole cable end out of the vehicle. And what you're gonna find is this kind of snakes around under the seat. It's gonna be under the carpet, snakes around under the seat, and then goes back up and comes up where the steering column is. So after we get done down here, we're gonna be going up in the inside. We're gonna take the seat out. We're gonna pull the door sill and we're gonna lift up the carpet. We're gonna pull the lower dash trim so that we can get the rest of the cable out. All right, guys, so the, the trick with thinking this, getting this uh, guy to release is there's a couple of plastic tabs. There's one you can easily see here, and there's an, one on the exact same place on the other side. And what I'm going to use are these curved long nose pliers because that help, works out pretty good to kind of slide right in here and give those guys a squeeze while you kind of push on it with your hands. And that should get us what we want. part way anyway this has just been on here a really long time and what's happening is the one on the side facing the uh, floorboard of the truck just it's really stiff there he goes all right so now we got him to kind of release and then we can just pull it off the clamp or the bracket like that right so you can see here now, see these two tabs on either side? They're just really stiff with age. You need to squeeze those in so that it'll clear through the, the clamp here, or the bracket rather, I keep saying clamp, the bracket, and then take it up to this black piece here and then it'll be able to 
uh, undo. So we're now done and we're ready to pull this through. So let's go up and do into the interior. All right, guys, as you come into the interior, first thing I do is uh, go ahead and turn your dome lights off because you have the door open for a while. You don't want to run the battery down. Uh, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Uh, you can either pull the seat first. If uh, this is bucket seats, uh, if, if you got a bench seat, you know, you're going to need to lift up and undo the, the fasteners on both ends. If it's a bucket seat like this, you can just take this guy out. If you've got um, a manual four-wheel drive auto track down on the floorboard, I suggest you take the um, or loosen up the screws that hold on the plastic cover for that because you're going to need to have uh, the ability to work with the carpet. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this lower dash trim so that I can show you how this other end of this cable hooks up because there's really two, only two business ends of this, this shift cable. We saw the lower business end. I want to show you the upper business end. The rest of it is just, of course, the cable itself snaking around under the carpet. So to do that, I'm going to be removing these 7 millimeter bolts that you see here and here. I can't get in here and do it with the camera, but there's one here, there's one here. You can see there's another one there, and there's a couple more down the, the other side. We take all those off so that we'll be able to remove this lower trim. All right, guys, once you've got these bottom 7-millimeter bolts out, what we're going to do is take this upper shroud trim off so that we can pull this lower piece off. And it's just some pushing clips that hold this. You just want to be gentle because it's really old try to use like a plastic tool like I'm using here right so once we get that side off we'll come over and we'll we'll do something similar on this side and sometimes it can help to open a little cup holder a bit again you just want to be gentle with it because it is old All right so once we get that off um, now we can go ahead and remove this piece right because we've taken these screws out you got to make sure you take the screws out I talked about earlier before you can do the step I'm doing now all right and then once this is off you're gonna have to reach in here and disconnect this little hose for the air conditioner or if you can you can get the whole vent off either way stuck there he goes all right just want to make sure nothing broke all right and then you can optionally remove the parking brake handle you don't have to though because if you just tilt this whole assembly you can kind of just twist it and and set it out of out of, out of the way right all right, so the next thing that we're going to be doing, besides cleaning up in here a little bit, you can partially see the cable that we're after already. We're not quite done yet, but this is the cable attaching to the opposite end, which involves the shift cable. And then going down, it has another clip just like the one we took off below, right here where my fingers are. To get better uh, access, though, we're going to take off this metal cover here with these 10 millimeter bolts. I think they're 10 millimeter. Yep, we're going to take these 10 millimeter bolts off here, these two here, and these two here, and get this plate out of the way so we can get our hand up in here a little easier. So I'm going to do that, and we'll come back. All right, guys, last one of these 10 mils. Get that out of the way. Be able to get this little guy off of here. Unless I miss something. Oh, it's just a piece of rubber. It's sound deadener. All right, so we take that off. The other thing I'll show you that we did here is I took this guy and I went ahead and made sure these two mounting clips were put back in here. You can tell on this vent, it'll say top on it. Went ahead and just pulled it off the hose over here because that's really less stress on that. And I'm just going to remount it inside this. And then we'll just hook up the hose 
when we get ready to put this piece back. And again, I'm just going to twist this out of the way. All right, guys, to have enough room to get under here and disconnect this, we're going to, at this time, remove the front seat. So again, on the bucket seat, you've got 15 millimeter bolts for them. There's one here in the front. There's another one in the front here, but it's obscured by this plastic trim cover. So you need to first pull the Phillips screws at the front and the back of the trim cover so that you can access the 15 millimeter bolt that's there. All right, guys, we're in the back. Here's the rear bolt. There's another 15 millimeter bolt there. And then on this side, here's the other Phillips screw I was referring to. Now this screw faces downwards. So the only way you'll be able to get it is a short stubby Phillips screwdriver because you won't have any room with the floorboard because the screw actually aims towards the ground. I guess it was a, a little effect decorative wise so it wasn't as visible. Anyway, so with this guy out, we should be able to remove this cover plate or this trim panel, I should say. And now we can just remove this and expose the other two bolts that we could not get before. So if you swing back over here, you can see here's the other 15 millimeter in the back and then there's one in the front. So with these four bolts removed, the only other thing you'll need to do is underneath the seat, if you look underneath the seat, you'll need to disconnect the power harnesses for the uh, power seat options. If your seat After you get those bolts out, guys, just laying the seat back and then you'll be able to access the plug. It's one of these kind of uh, ones where you have to push down and push back at the same time. So push down and push out, and that's what releases it. Go ahead and remove the seat and also remove the floor mat. All right, guys, we're going to take off this last metal plate here, held on by two more 7 millimeter bolts. Now, you don't have to do this on your end. I'm doing this so that we'll have a better view with the camera. You probably skipped this particular step, but all the others you're going to have to do that we did. All right. Got these two bolts off. Gonna work our air conditioning hose through. All right, guys, to get this off after you get the bolts off, you gotta lift up on it, and then it comes out. And what it is, is there's a couple of uh, little slots here and here, right at the top corners on both ends, that fit into these bracket pieces and kind of secure this guy. So if you don't lift up on it, you know, you'll be fighting with it. All right. Once we got that done, we can finally see what we need to see here. So here's our, here's our uh, uh, cable. And what we've got is we've got a clip down here. And then we've got the same kind of clip that we saw underneath, right? So we're going to start with, with that so you can tell what I'm talking about here. This has got that same U-clip, right? So we're gonna take this little U-clip off just like we did underneath. That's what they look like if they don't have any severe corrosion on them, right? They're just bare steel. So they even corrode inside the uh, cockpit here. And then we've got this guy up here. Now this piece is just a bushing that we need to get to come off. have a bigger screwdriver but that bushing is fine so it was holding on to this guy really good this is how it should be holding on underneath all right so the last two things we want to do here all right guys just going to try to come in here again with this tool I actually got it off I put it back we're going to do it again and kind of make sure that we get both ends squeezed in with this tool and then what I found was helpful is just to get a big flathead screwdriver. Push these guys the rest of the way. There we go. All right, now we got that off. Now we're going to turn our attention down to this little clip we talked about here. So that guy is like a pinch in the back pinch on both sides. It should come off. It's one of those things you got to be patient with. 
It's not one of those Christmas tree things, and when we get it out, you'll see what I'm talking about here. I don't even know if we need to bother saving this, right? For all I know, this is part of the new cable, and we could just cut it off and avoid this, but since we don't know, we will make an attempt to save it. All right. We did not save it. Oh, well. Yeah, not something that's easily serviced. All right, we tried. All right, so we got this out of here. Now it's under the carpet. The next thing we're going to do is come over and remove the door sill. All right, guys, and then you're just going to use a Phillips screwdriver. Now, you know, depending on the kind of vehicle you got, pickup or SUV, this is a Suburban, so Tahoe will be a little similar. But they all should be held in originally with Phillips screws. There's three on this one on the Suburban. I suspect it's the same on the pickups as well. Two, one up here, one in the middle I took out first. All right, we'll just come back after we get this out. All right, with those first two out, you'll see the seat belt pieces here. Now, normally you'd have to take that whole thing off. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screwdriver and I'm just going to kind of cheat a little bit. I'm going to get it in the screw and bend this piece of plastic back enough so that we can get this off. Of course, our flashlight just went f went for a tumble there. The reason I'm doing this is this thing is a pain to get off because it's kind of riveted on. If you go slowly, take your time won't damage anything. So I'm just going to keep going like that till we get this piece off and we'll come back. All right, with those screws off, you can lift out the sill plate. And at this point, with all of this out of the way, we should be able to begin lifting up the carpet. So that we can see where the cable goes. All right, and then uh, just pop this piece of trim off. It just is held in with a couple of metal clips. And at this point, we can peel the carpet back. You might have to unhook it from some of the wiring harness up underneath here, fish it out from underneath the pedals. It's not glued down or anything. It's just probably gonna be super, super stiff. flashlight over here. So here's our cable, right? As we continue to lift up the carpet, what you'll see are these little clips, right? Now in some models they're a clip like this. I've seen on older models it's actually a, a welded on piece of metal tab that'll actually be painted the body color. But at some point, there's gonna be some of these clips. And what you're gonna to have to do is just keep following this guy back. You look like under here, there's another one. All right, here's, let me show you another view, guys. So again, here's the, uh, the first clip. Hopefully there's not too much glare from this flashlight find a place for him to sit right here and then here's the other clip right here right it goes behind the airbag recorder and snakes over to right there and this guy right back here is the other side of that big rat grommet that we saw from underneath so I'm actually going to uh, see if I can just pull this through from this side Look like it. You're gonna have to get something I can use to pry this, but you're gonna pry this off. You're gonna have to get in here with two hands, and then we can pull the rest of that cable up from underneath. All right, I'm gonna just use one of these, uh, another one of these trim tools. It's got like a thicker end on it, because I don't want to scratch the paint under here and end up encouraging corrosion. The time you get something on the seats, so you just want to work this grommet away until it lets go. There we go. 
Now at this point, I'm going to have to do some vacuuming in here, but all that noise you hear is the flashlight moving around. All right, I'm just going to pull the cable a little bit out of the way on this side. You guys can still see okay. Now I'm going to have to interrupt you for just a minute. All right, I'm going to have to go up from underneath and push it through. All right, guys, it's just kind of hung up underneath here on that transmission bracket. It fits into like a little little U-shaped hook. We'll see that when we hook it up. You can feed it up from underneath. At this point, you can pull it out. All right, guys, we've got this out. It's that simple once you get that uh, disconnected, right? The only thing, you know, regrettable was that one little clip down here. I'm hoping that when we open up the new one that we find that it includes one. We'll find out in just a second. But uh, what I was trying to tell you is there's no bushing that is made to insert into here by GM or Dorman or any other aftermarket company. But I will link in the description uh, a company that makes a little rubber piece that sits in here. You know, it's mixed review. Some people say it doesn't really hold on much better than what we saw already. Some people say it, you know, it's a good temporary fix if you're not going to keep the truck for much longer. And that might be an option for you. And if you use that option, you'd ream this out <coughs> and stick that in there. Uh, I, I want more in a temporary fix, so that's why we went for changing out the whole cable. Sometimes it's the one up on top that goes, although not as often. And similarly, um, you could ream this out and, and put one of those little plastic pieces in from the same company that I'll, that I'll link. I think the kit actually includes both little pieces of plastic. But again, you know, it's, it's not going to be the same as the original cable. And it's, you know, a temporary fix kind of thing. And it's a pain, as you saw, to get this thing out. So you don't want to be doing it more than once. So uh, we're going to actually replace it with this GM part. And it's uh, part number 15037353. This one's uh, made in Mexico. Sometimes they say they're made in Malaysia. I guess in the grand scheme of things, I'd rather have the Mexican one. Take this guy out. And it's the same thing. It's all one piece with a new grommet. And we've got a, a, a brand new bushing in there. You can see now the white nylon, which had all worn off on the old one, is installed in there. Of course, we still got the same kind of bushing here. Um, you can actually see that there's a cap on this new design covering the end. should help with corrosion problems, particularly underneath. And we can see, thankfully, there's a new clip here. So I guess we didn't need to fart around with trying to remove that thing after all because we got a new one. So installation is just reversing what we did, right? We're going to crawl underneath the carpet again. We're going to get a helper underneath. We're going to feed this through. And we're going to snap these clips on for this grommet underneath the carpet. Uh, as we do that, we're going to route this around those clips that we saw. And also you'll notice uh, it had the harness, the orange wire harness to the airbag recorder went over this and we're just going to put it in the same way we took it out right so we're going to run it under that harness i'll show you when we get it installed and then we'll basically reverse what we did so let me get get you up to that point and we'll come back all right guys we've got our grommet reinstalled here and you can see if we follow the cable back right we've got the cable wrapped around the airbag module the way it originally was and we got it coming up through this clip here and then we got it coming up through this clip here and then we got it running right up through the top of the carpet and you can see we're all set and ready to reinstall it back under the column. So let's get the carpet all back into position and, and then we'll uh, connect it up at the steering column and we'll test it out after we connect it underneath. All right guys, we've got it snaked back up through the carpet and as you can see, you know, we put the carpet back where it goes. Typically you'll have a, a cutout for either a harness or maybe a, a piece of metal like this. You just wanna make sure you get it in the right spot so that when you put the trim back on, it's in the right uh, position. There you go, don't have any wrinkles or anything. All right, we've got this guy up above this bar and what we're going to do now is we're going to thank you some light here we're going to go ahead and bring this piece here back in our little clip I'm trying to see nope 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 wrong end this end okay and then we're going to take this guy here 
and we're going to push them on the bushing. And then we're going to take our little U-clip and we're going to push that guy back into position like that. And then we're going to take this little clip here that we had so much trouble getting off and we're going to clip him back on. And it's that simple. Everything is now reconnected and secure. Now let's go underneath and do the same thing. All right, guys, first check and make sure the grommet got properly seated with the clips. The next thing we're going to do, move the light over on this side. We want to make sure that the cable came through this little guide correctly in the back. This little guide right back in the very back there. Just want to make sure that it's going to be in a position where it's going to... Ah, this light. This light. It's going to be in a position where it's going to be like that. Okay, and then we're going to bring this guy down. My hand up here. All right, we want to get this guy pushed in just like we did underneath. And we're going to replace our U clip just like we did, uh, excuse me, oh, we did above, just like we did in the interior. Might have to get a little screwdriver in here because it's in the way for me pushing. And then we'll come over here and we'll make sure that we twist this guy around, get these kinks out of this dust cover. And we want to twist this around to the side that has the bushing opening. The light here, right? So this ends closed, this ends open. And we're just going to give it a a snap. Now that is super tight, which is how you want it. No kinks in the dust boot. And the only thing we need to do is get a screwdriver in here to push that U-clip in and we're all ready to test it. So let me go get everything put back together and we'll go over the torque values and we'll go through it. Right, guys, we got everything buttoned back up. Let me just run over these torque values and then we'll go down and adjust the cable underneath and that'll be our last step. Uh, the bolts on the seat are 41 foot-pounds, all four of them. If you care to do it, the uh, torque on these screws on the door sill panel are 18 inch pounds. It also happens to be the torque for these seven millimeters that run along the bottom of this, this lower trim, this knee bolster. And those 10 millimeters and the 17s that are inside with that knee bolster reinforcement plate, those the service manual was ambiguous on. I think that the, what they meant to say was that the uh, the 10 millimeters are probably also 18 inch pounds and the, and the, uh, the, the um, ones in the middle were probably 27 inch pounds, but I ended up just doing 18 in all of them because it just felt like it was too much for such small fasteners. So it was ambiguous on that. You might just want to go snug there. So the next thing we're going to go do is adjust this cable, right? So I'm going to show you a page or a section in the service manual, right? So um, this is on the 4L80E with this chop. It's the same for the 4L60E, right? There's several different transmissions that this cable fits. And when you replace it, you've got to go through this, this step, right? So the key thing that we didn't do yet is um, we've got to remove a shipping cover on the end of the cable that attaches to the shift lever on the transmission. We've got to slide this piece here forward. And then when we do that, we'll be able to push this retaining clip out and then we're going to go through and we're going to cycle from park down to first, right? And what the service manual suggests you do is you do that cycling from park to first and back 10 times. And that will work the adjustment. Now, what you'll find is if we don't do it, like I've got right now, it won't go past third gear. You can go PR, you know, N, D, and 3, and that's as far as you can go. If, if you find a problem where you can't get into first, for example, it's probably because you skipped this step. So... We're going to get underneath that. We're going to have a helper, you know, kind of help us with moving this after we get underneath and uh, do the adjustments. You don't want to start the engine or anything like that. Uh, you want to definitely hold the brake down. You want to have wheel chocks. We're going to have the wheels chocked just in case, keep the parking brake engaged, all that kind of safety stuff. But then that'll complete the last step. So I'm going to show you here in a minute before we go underneath what this looks like with the, um, the old cable. All right, guys, so looking at the old cable, when we get underneath, right, it needs to already be attached to the stud. That's where we left it. We're going to pull off that little shipping tab that you see on top, and then we'll be left with what we had on the old one. This clip here, this, this slide, I guess I should say, needs to be uh, 
uh, undone from this clip, right? And so we'll be able to come in underneath the truck, we'll be able to get a little screwdriver into this little piece here, and we'll be able to slide this forward. And then when we do that, uh, you know, I think it'll be a lot less stiff than this one. I'm just reaching in here to get another tool. But we need to be able to push this in so that this pops out like that. When this is popped out, then you do that 10 park to first adjustment. And after it's done and in its position, then you put it back in and you pull this down till it clicks and you're done. So now let's go do it on the new cable. All right, guys, um, yesterday we left this, uh, this kind of U-clip here. Or the, actually, yesterday, the previous video clip, and we just take a screwdriver here and push that in. That's how we get this locked in. So now that leaves us with this piece here that we were showing on the old cable. So this is the little shipping insert that they were talking about, or I was talking about, rather. This is what's holding this clip in the out position where it's not locked. Now, we got somebody sitting in uh, the, the cockpit here. I'm going to show what the problem is if you don't do this step, right? So... We're going to start cycling through to park. So let's go down to R. And you can see we got a lot of slack in the cable. Neutral, drive, third, and then second. Right? So we don't have enough to do the next gear. So go ahead and put it all back into park. All right. And so we've kind of repeated this procedure that they were talking about. So just go ahead and keep cycling it through. Uh, park to third and basically what we're doing here with this procedure in the service menu is just trying to get the kinks out of the cable You're trying to get the slack out of the cable and at one point what we're going to do is we're going to lock this into position We can go ahead and pull this off while this is being done And once we've done this enough times we'll push this in when it's in the park position and that should have us good to go After this one, just stay in park. Okay, stay right there in park. I'm going to push this guy in. All right, now cycle it through and see if you can go past third. Reverse, neutral, drive, third, second, and that's first. Go ahead and go into third. Now go into second. Go into first. Go back to park. Okay, and so we're in good shape. So it looks like it's okay. So what we'll do is we'll bring this locking tab down, right? And now this will lock this where it doesn't get popped out again and it won't have the slack. We're going to go ahead and test this out, right? We did the 10 times before. We're going to do it a few more, maybe five or six times again like this to make sure we got the right feel and tension. If for some reason it doesn't feel right, we can push this back up like we showed outside with the uh, use cable and push this guy through again, and we can repeat the process to get it dialed right in to the amount of adjustment we need. Otherwise, that's it, guys. Um, it's not a bad repair. It's just a lot of disassembly and reassembly. If you got some comments or concerns or some feedback, go ahead and leave a comment below. Hit that like button so we can get some more visibility on these videos and help the channel grow. And if you have the inclination, hit that subscribe button too. Thanks for watching.